This is Charlie Parsons for the Stomping Ground, powered by Well Hydrate and available on the zone. Having a little look at the mic. Stomping ground. How are we, geez? <laughs> what do you think? So, stomping right, when, when we launched initially, we had mixed reviews. We had, uh, could be part of a football hooligan type thing. Stomping ground. I don't know, it sounded like a food place or something more like. <laughs> so, right. Kind of a restaurant. Okay, you know so I mean? my, my mate gave me the list of names. Chat out, Matty Pizzy. And he works in the hospitality industry and he had a load of names for pubs, bars and restaurants. And it was actually... Yeah, it sounds like a restaurant or yeah, like a, a, pub, a pub restaurant site. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Great for the multi-sport yeah. image. Uh, what's happening? You good? Good, meet you. Yeah, good. Good, good, good. 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 Out in Riyadh, living the dream? <sighs> Sweating. Yeah. Living the dream, no, yeah. Just Your idea to come here. out here? No, no, I don't mind the sun, to be fair. But yeah, back in Saudi, been here a couple of times, the third third visit now but never been to Riyadh so oh, been no, to first time, no, in, first time uh... Riyadh been to Jeddah oh, twice wow. so Jeddah for Callum Groves Jeddah for Joshua Ruiz Callum fought on that as well so oh shit so you've not been out since the whole Riyadh season never been the Riyadh season cards no oh, never wow. was not here for the Fury fight so yeah good first to be time here. for everything um I suppose just firstly on yourself is it a little bit I was going to say bittersweet but bitter at the moment for you with the sort of yeah I mean talk me through it all on your end yeah it's still it's still like a, a, a bit of pill to swallow it's still a tough you know a tough couple of weeks after the Wembley Riyadh season card because uh, I should be after being on a Riyadh season card and you know but I mean yeah like still not in limbo but he, he, he is still thinking I'm going to get on a Riyadh season card going forward now because like you say, you just don't know how it's going to work. You don't know how Sergio Sheik's looking at it. Maybe that could have, like, you've had your chance. Even though it was out of my my control, you know, I was I was sick. But you just don't know how it's going to work. Here. Have you had any sort of conversations since, just in terms of getting yourself back in the mix? Um, not with Spencer or Turkey, no. You know, I've never had a conversation with Turkey. Anyway, I've had a conversation with Spencer. Um, obviously, I'll bump into Spencer Alam here. But no, I've had no conversation in that end. But I've had a conversation with Eddie and Frank Smith and a conversation with George Warren. Um, after this trip, I'll probably pursue one of them. You know, uh, I'm going to see what gets said here. If there's any talk of me going on, maybe the February Riyadh season card or any names get mentioned. If not, then I'll, I'll, I'll you know, get on with it. With, Frank already. Uh, we were having a little discussion in there over a bit of food, and it was uh, how long ago since you since you made your debut? Sixteen years 16 yesterday. Sixteen years I mean, yesterday. Pro de pro debut, and yeah. then your first world title was nine years. Nine yesterday. years yesterday. When you look at the way that not only your career <clears throat> has played out, but the way that the boxing landscape's changed, yeah. do you almost sit and just think like, I've only been in this sport for three, four years, right? And I think, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like what a bonkers sport! You've to just go through all of that. I mean, Eddie and Frank now like like each other. Yeah, that no, you know what I've said to a few people. I had a coffee before with Dennis, and I just said, "No, what? You've got to be. You should just be licking your lips now because um, I, I've said to me brothers, I'm fucking gutted. I'm not 26 when Take Hill Sheikh and Riyadh seasons come involved in in the sport, wanting to make. It's like he's playing a game, making fancy matchups. Oh yeah, I'll make them too. Even though it's like career mode no, for boxing, no interest, doesn't care who promotes who. Whereas like, you know, we I've gone down the route where when I was with Frank Warden, if if Matchroom had a fight in my way, it's pointless me even calling them out because unless it gets put to a pace bit, there's no deal going to get done with Eddie and Frank. So it was always who's in and around my weight and my own stable, and now it's like. He doesn't care, he doesn't even probably know full who's, say Dennis and McGrail, he probably doesn't even know who the way, who, who I do. He just thinks, right, I want that matchup, and he doesn't care who the way, because if he wants to fight, the promoters are, like, you know, agreeing and letting it happen, so, great, and I say, I'm gutted. I'm gutted I'm not 26, 27, 28, and, and got a few years left with him, because um, he's making this sport go from there to there. Just out of curiosity, what did you make of Josh Kelly's performance against Ishmael Davis? Um, I don't know to, what words to use. Workman like maybe, no. 
Um, somebody had to scrape over the line. Um, if you want me to dissect his performance, I think he got in and ran away after four or five rounds and just looked for space in the ring and was basically desperate for the final bell. Is that still a fight that interests you? If it comes on the table. I suppose financially it just whatever's there does best just for whatever, you. Right? Whatever 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 fight that get put to me, if they make sense to me and they're big enough fights then yeah, if Josh Kelly fight comes on the table for me again, yeah. Um you know obviously I, 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 I bit the other day on it into you but it's more just because of Adam being a little smug shit that he is, but um if the Josh Kelly fight comes back on the table, so be it, but like I said before it's not personal, I don't mean to or... be. I don't mean to be. Yeah, it's not personal with Josh. You know, I, I don't mind Josh. I like Josh, but um, boxing's boxing, and again, this is not being disrespectful towards Josh. It's going back to what we're talking about about his excellency and the Riyadh season cards. I personally don't think they'll be in a massive rush to use Josh Kelly again after that performance. Um, like I said, I'm not saying they're going to be in a rush to use me. Either. I might have shot myself in the foot. By having to pull out, but I personally don't think they're going to be in a rush to use Josh after that performance. Fair enough. Um, Saturday night's main event is precisely what the sport's all about, right? Yeah. Um, just as a fan, I know everyone keeps saying with Better Beer, and they did with Callum before, they, they talk about you know just aging overnight as such, and what is he, 39 years old now, but it's not happened just yet. We've got them both at what we think is their primes. Both undefeated, four undisputed. It's what the sport's all about, right? It is, yeah. And it's a fight that everyone's been calling for. It's a fight that is Mount Walton and it's got every boxing fan with mixed opinions. Um, the question's always going to be if better be of ages overnight, then you know, you massively fancy Bivol. You might fancy Bivol anyway. I fancy better be of. But I will not be surprised in the slightest if Bivol beats him on points. Um, I beat him in any way, you know, but it's a um, it's two uh, elite champions for every belt, and um, it's what boxing's all about. And it's great that you know again, Riyadh season and his excellency has, has made this happen. Why is it that you believe and, and give all to the edge? Just more like as power as uh, as shot selection, more just like as output and a scene. As power first hand, um, so I've seen Bivol up close, and yeah, I just I just fancy better be Is it just that nastiness and the spitefulness, the way he cuts? Yeah, off but the effortless ring? also. Like I don't think he loads up on any shots either, but still, you know, it's like a mule. He tud tud tud. Um, yeah, just like I said, I fancy him. I could be massively wrong. I fancy Joshua. I was wrong with Dubois, but was wasn't surprised. Um, I fancy Bear to be here, but it's that type of fight that if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. I didn't get it massively wrong. It's not like he's going to lose a massive yeah, yeah, upset. Yeah, yeah. It's a 50 50 fight, and I'm sure Bivol's favourite. What surprised you most about the Turbiev in the Callum Smith fight? The noise of his shots up close, but how effortless the shots was. Yeah. Like, I don't think he bit on his gum shield and really dug a shot in. Um, it was just effortless, so relaxed, but. So fucking so hard, you know what I mean? Um, we just saw Connor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr. Yeah. have a bit of an altercation in the hotel. What did you make of it? Um, not really to do with me, they've got their own beef. Um, what I made, it was a bit uh, like, you know, I don't know. Eubank's just weighed in, do you really have to? But I don't know what's being said, it's personal with them now, it, it, it really does sound and look personal with them now. Ben saying, you know, if he went boxing tomorrow, he just stuck it right on his chin. So, um, yeah, it looks personal with them now, more more so than what I know. But I think it's prob proper handbags. Like it's all for so cameras. It's for yeah, it's just handbags before it. Um, the fight doesn't really need building up. But I thought that was just handbags for all the media to get the phones and cameras out because nothing's really going to happen in the hotel reception. Just out of. Um Curiosity. I, I, don't, I don't really know your feelings towards Connor as such. We certainly know your feeling towards Chris. Would you rather one out of the two of them if they fought? To win? Yeah. Um, uh, it makes no difference to me, honestly. It makes no difference. No, I'm more just mean as Yeah, well. I know, yeah, honestly. But, like, my honest answer, 
if Eubank beat Conor, I wouldn't be gutted or I wouldn't be pissed off. If Conor beat Eubank, I wouldn't be gutted or I wouldn't be pissed off. Um, whoever wins that fight makes no difference to me in my career, so me or me and the rest of my life. So the fight, I believe the fight's done. If it gets made, then you know I, I, I'll watch it and. Um, as I say, I've always, I've always said I think Chris beats him because it's too big for him. But um, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do another interview after Saturday with you and I'll judge that again because what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing with Chris are not great signs. Yeah, so I'm a, he's been getting a lot of stick this week off Frank Eddy, uh, some of the media as such. I mean, we, we saw he turned up in his uh, Saudi traditional outfit with a sword and then he did the workout in the outfit. What have you made of it all? He's turning up in Rolls Royces. <coughs> yeah. You know, we we know what it's, it sort of says what it is on the tin with Chris a little bit. But what of course, you uh, of we it? know that anyway. Like I said, look, I'm gonna have to go back to my fight with him. We got given Rolls Royces and Bentleys, and you know, he chose to turn up at the fight in the Rolls Royce on his own. I chose a six six eighty to minibus with me brothers and and and, and me team. It's just a, I think it's just, you know some of the two characters up. Um, but I think it's not really funny. I don't. I don't find it funny. Me. I think he's taking the piss out of the Saudi culture, turning up and trying to train and with all the gear on and um, turning up with a sword. Like, what the fuck's that about? Like, I don't get the method behind the sword. To be honest with you, but he might tell you the difference. Um, yeah, that's, just, that's crazy. But yeah, I know he's getting stick off them because they're probably fed up themselves. They want to make matchups. They're probably pissed off. How can you knock five million pound back for Sh- Hamza Shiraz? What do, you, what do you make of that? Again, like, how the fuck can you knock five million back for Hamza Shiraz? He said that it will be a bigger fight in the future. It, it just depends. Like, how many times have people said that and come unstuck? You know, in the future, well, what future is this? Because you're fighting now, then you're fighting Conor in February. If Conor beats you, you're probably done. Do you think Conor can beat him? I think he can. Yeah, whether he, like I said, I've always. Pick Chris being a bit too big, but what I'm seeing of Chris lately and what I'm hearing, I don't know. I don't know whether. whether. So I'm curious with Chris. We see he goes out to like Vegas for a year and he's gambling and whatever. When you completely switch off like that, and also he is 35 years of age now, how detrimental is that? It depends because he says he lives a good life. You know, he he does always seem to be in shape. That could just be his genes, but. Um, yeah, you just seem to always be in shape, and but whether you're away from a gym and you're not learning, you're not getting coached. I don't think he gets coached a lot, and I, and I think that sums it up in his style and his ability. Um, Is that an arrogance thing? Yeah, it's always been an arrogance thing with him, and it always will be. You know, he's got Jonathan Banks in his corner now. Bo Mack was the best thing in the world when he, you know, when he beat me. Um, yeah, it's just it's, it's probably an arrogance thing with him. But it's an arrogant thing with him when you've got a coach and you're not listening to him. For the whole year you're talking about it, it's not like he's been in a gym with a coach, whether he flitted him and out of May of this gym, he's doing his own workouts, he's not getting coached by somebody where he's got to listen. Just lastly for me, and this is more me asking you as a fan, I know the cameras and, and the microphones are on, but obviously we know the feud that the two of you guys have, how bitter and personal and, and nasty it was. For example, the first fight, you stop him. Was there ever a moment where you went back into the dressing room or even after your second fight and you had a chat without all the bravado, without all the cameras and you thought, you know what, maybe he's not as bad as he comes across or no? No. <laughs> no, there wasn't none of that. Um, there wasn't none of that. Like I said, regardless of what I think of him away from the cameras, um, yeah, just, just... You never saw that deep No, No, I can't, um, I can't really, I can't take too much of his antics and, and try like that. It was not really... You know what? It got personal, and then once the rematch of that, and there was no. It was what it was. We 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 we're not friends. We we've got a rivalry. We boxed each other once. We both stopped each other. Again, it's only only fucking God knows why a tear fight did nothing. But does that annoy you? Of course, because I think how are you happy with one one? Like it's insane. Do you think that's just like a typical boxing thing, though, where almost like you look at AJ Ruiz, for example. I know it was convincing in the second fight. I'm just using it as a for rematch. Yeah, I get that, say. but his, it, you know, his was convincing, but his was, his was convincing. So plain to see how injured I was. Like I've yeah, never performed yeah, like that yeah, in my yeah, life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mom was convincing. I, I, I had him on his back and then on his face. Like 
you know, wobbling around the ring, he, he, he stopped me with the referee jumping in, just like, ah, oh, no, you've had enough. Like, do you regret taking that? Um, of course, yeah, me himself, but that, that, that's for a different story, that's for a different interview. I regret the people, you know, the book stopped with me, but I wish I'd call people's bluff. Um, obviously, being well documented, the, the, the whole the situation regards it, around it, and you know, in a couple of months' time, maybe I might sit and think, you know, was it a fucking plan all along with, with, with Boxer forcing me into it, and then all of a sudden you sign, you bank. The whole lot of it stinks now when you look at it, but. The book stopped with me, I should have called the bluff and just said, go on, we'll do what you want to do. It's the boxing industry for you, eh? It is, yeah. It's a dog sport. sport. It is. Liam, you're a legend. Nice As always, lovely catching up. Thank you, brother. Thanks, son.